Hey, what's going on guys? Jake for Tech here, back with another video. And it's been a few since I've uploaded. I'm definitely going to try and get back on the regular weekly upload schedule. Maybe try and stretch it. If we have a lot of content, we could do maybe two videos. Nonetheless, definitely going to try and get the consistency back up. But anyways, today we are going to be jumping back into some Xbox Series S or Series X content. We're going to be talking about the remote play feature within the next generation of consoles and in this case the xbox series s and series x so remote play is a feature that we've kind of seen across the board when it comes to the next generation of consoles whether it's the side of xbox and as far as i know playstation also has the remote play feature and for those of you that don't know what remote play is it's pretty much exactly how it sounds you can access and play your consoles from a remote location and not actually being at the location of your console and essentially it is just streaming the the ui the gameplay whatever you're doing on your console to another device and this is all done in this case through the xbox app and in this video testing out the remote play feature with xbox i'm actually using my new ipad air fifth generation with the m1 chip we're going to see how it performs so you might ask how does remote play differ from cloud gaming so whenever you do have a cloud gaming service of some sort, you are streaming the games and perhaps the console to a device. But instead of being it your own personal device like remote play, you're actually streaming it through the service and on whatever service provider you have on their hardware. So it'd be, you know, Xbox's servers if you have Game Pass Ultimate and you're doing the used to be called xCloud, I believe. But now it's just cloud gaming through Xbox or I don't know what exactly they call it. With remote play, you're streaming the gameplay actually from your console. And on the side of cloud gaming, you're streaming it from the company's servers. And in this case, it would be Microsoft. So this is definitely something too where mileage may vary. This is a very connection based feature. So the performance and experience that you get, it definitely is going to pit to depend on a couple things one being the connection from the location of where your console is and another is going to be the connection coming from where you're trying to stream your console from so this is something to keep in mind and as you set this up too from the console side it'll run some tests and kind of give you an idea if you are able to do remote play or have a somewhat decent experience with it so in this video like i said we're going to be testing this on my iPad Air 5th generation with the M1 chip. I'm also going to be doing more videos on that here pretty soon, but we're going to be testing out remote play. I'm going to show you guys how to set it up both on the console side and the setup on the app to whichever device you're trying to stream to because there's a little bit of setup on both and I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that. And I will show you how to connect a controller if you are running iOS. And we're going to play some games a little bit and see how the performance is. So let's get right into it. Alrighty guys, starting off with the console configuration and getting your Xbox Series S or Series X set up for remote play. On your console, you're gonna want to get to the settings menu. Once you are in the root of the settings menu, you're gonna wanna go down to device and connections. In the device and connections menu, go to remote features, which can be found in the first column right in the middle. So this is the remote features menu and there is a little box at the bottom that says enable remote features. You're going to want to check that box and it will enable the remote access feature on your console. So this is the main setting for enabling the remote console feature on your Xbox. Once you check off that box, it's going to say testing your setup and it's basically just going to run through a configuration in the background and it is going to test your connection to make sure your connection is favorable for using the remote play feature. Now, in this case, once the test was complete, we got a message that says you're good to go. And then it showed me some different specs about my connection. Obviously, in this case, you're going to want mostly green check marks. But if you have a couple caution marks, that's usually not a big deal. And you're still able to have a decent experience when using remote play. After the diagnostics too, you can go ahead and hit next. One other thing to note is my console is set to instant on as far as the power features go. So make sure that's enabled too on your console. If not, you might come back with some more errors when it comes to the diagnostics after enabling remote play. 
Then when you hit next, in this case it said the console is ready for remote play, so we are good to go. The only other settings in this menu you can kind of tweak is the Xbox app preferences, which in this case it might be a little bit more secure if you do only from profile signed in to this Xbox console. That way, the only way you can access this console is if you've been signed into the console, it'll see the same people that have signed into it from the app and will only allow those profiles. So that is it on the console side. Now we are going to turn our attention over to our mobile device, in this case, my iPad Air, and we're going to do some a little bit of setup when it comes to the controller in the Xbox app. So the first thing we're going to do is connect our controller to the iPad. In this case, this is iOS, so this is the setup you would go about doing so via Bluetooth. But the setup for Android or other mobile devices might be similar. But in this case, we're just going to go into the settings menu, go into the Bluetooth options, making sure our Bluetooth is enabled. And then on the controller, I'm going to go ahead and hold down the sync button and we should see our device pop up on the iPad. Go ahead and hit select and pair and we should be good to go on our controller. Next, we are going to open the Xbox app. And when you open it and you're signed in, there's a couple ways you can access your console. One is the little icon in the top right corner, which will give you some options for remote play, open remote control, manage console and games, or set up a new console. You can also access this menu from the library menu. Then next to captures and games, there'll be a little consoles tab. You can press that and it will give you the console settings menu where you can access remote play and a couple other features. Once you tap remote play, the app will initiate connecting to your console, which can take some time depending on the connection from where you're trying to stream your console from and the connection that your console is actually getting. But once the splash screen with the spaceship is done, you should see the Xbox logo pop up and then it will ask you if you would like to find and connect to devices on your local network. Go ahead and press OK and that should bring you right into your console. If you run into an error on this, it could be a number of things. But one thing I ran into was just failing to connect to my console. And that was due to a setting inside the application settings menu on iOS. If I would go to settings and go to the Xbox app and check those settings, I didn't have the local network switch turned on. So make sure you enable that as I think it fixed it for me. But I haven't seen this on all my iOS devices, which this feature will get enabled if you hit OK on the prompt that we just saw before remoting into our console. So that is it. You are officially remoted into your console using the remote play feature via the Xbox app. And in this case, we are running this through my iPad Air. I gotta say overall the look and feel on the iPad Air streaming the Xbox Series S via remote play has a really good look and feel. The nice thing about remote play or cloud gaming is it's not putting all the stress on your system or you're not necessarily dependent on the hardware you're trying to run your games on as you're still running the games through either your console or the cloud gaming service, which puts all the stress on that hardware and your mobile device is just a delivery system. As I mentioned though, the connection based elements are going to be the most crucial part to getting the best experience. In this case, I tested Halo Infinite and Rocket League for a little bit, and I have tested other titles, but it has all been on the same network as my Xbox Series S, which streaming over your local network is probably best case scenario and just allows you to experience your console in a different form factor. I gotta say the gaming experience was overall very comfortable. There wasn't much input delay or I didn't experience much lag spikes, which is definitely something that could hinder the experience, especially when playing more competitive titles like Halo Infinite and Rocket League. But the occurrences of lag spikes was super marginal and I didn't feel any significant input delay. The image quality isn't the sharpest thing, but I do believe it auto scales based on connection and streaming to a smaller device like the iPad Air does allow us to have really good pixel density, so it does help the image quality there. The frame rates were super steady as I believe we were pulling somewhere between 30 and 60 FPS. 
and was extremely consistent as I didn't feel any sort of frame rate drop. I really hope to see continued support for utilities like this and features like this as it kind of puts the power back in the hands of the consumers with being able to use your own hardware. I think the remote play feature could be particularly useful if you want to access your console on the go, maybe install some games while you're away from your console, and just manage your downloads and installations. You can do this on the Xbox app, but you don't get as much information as actually being on the console and not as much you can actually do. I think this is ideal if your gaming squad has a new game they want to try out and start playing and for instance, you're at work and you want to get this download started and so it's ready when you get home. You can just remote in, get the download going. And if you're like me on the Series S, storage is always of the essence. So I'm constantly having to move around games just because of the small amount of internal storage. So you can do that on this remote play feature. Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap up this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it and found it helpful and maybe found a new way to play your Xbox Series S or Series X. I think this is really cool because it kind of changes up the gaming experience and the form factor of your console. Being able to stream it to something like an iPad I think was a really cool experience and I was amazed with the performance. Although even though we were on the same network and performance will probably differ if we we're in a different location as I haven't quite done the test for it yet. But the performance was really good. There wasn't a whole lot of latency or frame rate drops that I've noticed. So it may differ if we are in a remote location remoting in, but if you have a really good connection speed from another location where you're, you are streaming your console from, I imagine the experience would be pretty close. Thank you guys for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it and found it helpful, make sure to drop a like on it. And if you want to see more tech related videos like this one, be sure to subscribe. As always guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.